Hello guys and girls, welcome back to Geekism, my name is John T and today we are continuing with our Let's Build series here in Planet Coaster. First of all, Happy New Year! Uh, if I've timed this right, this will be... Actually, I think this will be the second video of 2017. Actually, I think there's a Let's Play going up before it, so I apologise uh, for not wishing you all the best for 2017 in that one. Uh, but we are now in 2017. I'm recording this uh, voiceover on the second of the year. Uh, so I hope you all had a great Christmas and festive season and whatever you celebrate and New Year and everything's great and, and we're all back to normal and we're cracking on uh, with 2017. and some fantastic content coming at you on Geekism, uh, including this from Planet Coaster. So, <laughs> I don't know what I'm on about, let's just move on. <laughs> so today we're uh, carrying on with our Let's Build series. We're having a quick break before we start on the pirate area, uh, just to come back to the entrance and do a little bit more work on the main street. I thought this might be a good, a good way of doing it rather than just working on the main street for so long because obviously there's no rides or things like that in the main street. Uh, maybe every time we finish an area we come back, do a building or two down here. I don't know, maybe that's how it works or maybe I'll just come over here whenever I get the inspiration for a building uh, to add on. First thing we do is add a couple of fountains on the way in and we pave all the area there, get rid of the path. Uh, again, it's something we did on the very, very, very main entrance. Uh, on the other side of the uh, train station. I just think it, it works really well, so we've done that again here. Uh, these fountains have got a lot of inspiration from Alton Towers in the UK, although they look nothing like this. <laughs> uh, the Alton Towers does have fountains as you go into the park. They actually have um, frogs on lily pads that squirt water at each other and they've been there forever and they're really fantastic and they really very much remind me of my youth whenever I see them. Uh, but I like the idea of having fountains and, uh, and the other good thing is with fountains is they can be relatively low lying uh, for when at the eventually at the end of the main street we're going to have a, a big weenie, uh, most likely a castle seeing as this is our first major park we'll probably go very traditional and do a big castle. Um, if you don't know, a weenie is a term uh, coined by Walt Disney, uh, which is actually named after a dog toy or dog treat called weenies that you would feed to dogs. And it's basically very large structures that will um, act as sort of compass points on a map when you're looking at a theme park and they're areas that attract people in. So uh, with Disney, you have the Disney Castle is the first major weenie. And then you have Space Mountain on one side, Big Thunder Mountain on the other. Uh, and they sort of attract you to the different areas. And basically that's what we mean when we use the term weenie. Uh, so uh, the reason I'm talking about that, sorry, is the fountain here uh, it can stay relatively low lying so it's not going to be covering any eyesight. You'll be able to see right down the main street and bam, hit the castle. Uh, so we finish off the, uh, the thing here with a bit of a jester. Don't use all the way up to his feet. I actually sort of bury him down so it's more of a bust. Uh, but I think it works quite well. Finish it off with a few uh, the water special effects, and then we add some planting in the gaps there. Um, loving the new flowers that we can colour. I've uh, been really looking forward to using those. Obviously, with the western area, they don't really fit the theme, so it's great to come back here and do a little bit more of a sort of, I mean, a generic theme we're going for really with the main streets. It's not going to be anything uh, too themed. Uh, all the buildings themselves will be probably of a sort of English or perhaps early American build style. Uh, the build that we do today actually is um, heavily inspired by a building in London, uh, but we'll get into that in a little minute. So yeah, really nice to be able to use some of the flowers uh, there that we can colour in. Uh, we'd still like more, of course, but you know, it's nice that we're getting things that we're asking for. And I'm uh, very much looking forward to Planet Coaster in 2017. If they keep going the way they've started, uh, we're in for a really great year of content from these guys. Uh, there we go. So then I realised that we have a big path down the middle that we should probably fill in to get people walking down there and you'll see that people start using that and then we can have some uh, benches either side. The only problem with doing this technique of sort of covering the paths is that things like benches and bins have to be connected to a path uh, and so it's sometimes a bit tricky to place them where you would like them. Here I have to have another go at that. Um, so that it's one thing you have to think about if you're going down this method. Uh, here I'm going to build a, a street post. I wanted a lamp post with hanging baskets. Um, eventually I found that we could use the two. those two new plants are basically the smallest ones in there. And I was going to use an art piece for the bottom there, but I found that actually one of the baubles fits quite as well as like the basket. So uh, we end up dragging a few of those out uh, and we use those later on in the build as well. And that'll be a running theme down the main street. So here we go, then we're moving into the main part of the video then, uh, which is a corner build of the main street here. 
This is heavily inspired by a building in Covent Garden in London uh, that is now currently housing a Five Guys restaurant. And there is a bit of reason behind this. I haven't just sort of pulled the, the building out of my bum. Uh, a friend of mine, um, by, I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning his name, by the name of Mark Waddington, uh, is a very good magician by trade. He works as a close-up magician, uh, but he also has a sort of sideline uh, hobby come business where he builds bespoke Lego uh, buildings for companies or various people and uh, he was recently commissioned to build this building in Lego for Five Guys uh, so obviously I was uh, it's a building I'd not seen before but obviously he sort of put some pictures up when it was finished and it was a really really fantastic build and uh, and uh, I thought, well, that'd be quite cool to try and replicate it in Planet Coaster. So this uh, building is not as, um, oh, what's the word? It's not as a direct a copy, um, so to speak. Obviously, the one that Mark did was a, was was pretty much verbatim copy because it was it was built for the people who own the building uh, or at least occupy the building. Um, but here, I just wanted to use the style of it, uh, and so it so it's sort of goes its own little way and obviously we're a little bit more limited in Planet Coaster with what we can build as opposed to Lego you pretty much do whatever you like can't you um, but so that's so the, the original concept is from this building in Covent Garden but we end up changing it quite a bit we end up, end up building a small clock tower on the front of it because we've got to remember that it is a corner building of the main street one of the first buildings you're going to see so it does still need to be relatively grandiose and and uh, and, and impressive like that uh, but apart from that yeah it's a relatively uh, close representation of uh, this building in Covent Garden so it's a very very traditional London building uh, it is red brick and uh, it's actually red brick with a lot of white detailing so much so that you can't actually actually see much of the red brick uh, when it's finished and that's something we've tried to do here the other main thing I've really tried to do with this building something we haven't really done much anymore um, is the idea of forced perspective which is something they use a lot in theme parks uh, the idea of forced perspective is that as the building well there's lots of different ideas but in this case uh, as the building gets higher the floors get smaller uh, so this is actually a three-story building uh, but you'll see that each story isn't a four meter high story that you would normally use as a wall piece and four meters and four meters there's actually nothing in this building so we don't have to keep it uh, lined up as we go up and actually the floors get smaller and smaller as it goes and what that does is gives the building a real uh, real sort of trick of the eye to make it look much taller than it is it's something that disney especially use everywhere but pretty much any main street uh, or you know sort of street buildings you find in uh, in theme parks do it alton towers does it a lot on their main street uh, harry potter world uh, sorry there's a slight cut there uh, the, the, the footage corrupted but all i've done is done a few built a uh, few windows uh, harry potter world in orlando uh, universal they do it a lot in their sort of hogsmeade area and in um Diagon Alley as well. So you'll see here that each each floor gets thinner and thinner and you end up with just those tiny little windows at the top there and it just gives you a, a, a perception of height. Uh, it doesn't particularly work in the game obviously because for the most part we're going to be looking down at it but I wanted it to do it uh, sort of very realistic to the theme park aesthetic so that's something we do there. Uh, the other thing that this building has that's really nice is this lovely balustrade across the roof there and it also has some um, dormer windows. I, I tried taking that all the way back and realised it looks a bit silly so end up taking it and using this stucco chimney piece instead and uh, you have to remember that this only has to look good from the front uh, this is very much a facade building so the back of it we will eventually just sort of cover in uh, you know steel and, uh, and aircon units and all that sort of stuff uh, so it's only really the front of it that needs to look good so once we've done that one side then it's just a case of repeating it all over. It takes a little bit more work than it would normally because of the uh, the way I've built it, everything's slightly lopsided. So it's just a case of moving it all over and then relining it up again. It take, took a little while to do, I, I ended up cutting that bit out because it wasn't very interesting to watch. <laughs> uh, but we ended up doing it uh, no problem in the end. It was just a case of finishing off the front here. I originally was just going to do a normal corner, but then I decided, no, this is going to be the front building of a main street. It needs to be a little bit more grandiose. So this is where we start to move away from the uh, from the original concept building here, and uh, we end up making a bit of a uh, clock tower instead. Uh, but again, carrying on the window uh, there so it sort of matches still and lines up. You see we have actually placed a Five Guys sign there, that's mostly for the thumbnail and the fact that we're calling it a Five Guys building. That'll probably end up being changed and, made, and be made into something a little bit more subtle uh, in the actual park. Uh, but for now I thought it'd be quite cute to have it as an actual Five Guys. 
Uh, there we go, we've got the clock there. It looks a bit plain, so I wanted to do a little bit something with it. We end up placing these windows behind it, and one thing that's really nice is, because the clock is tiered, uh, you can actually place it a little bit behind, you get that really nice design there. Uh, this building will be up on the Steam Workshop as well, so don't worry if we're rushing through it a little here. Uh, you'll be able to have uh, download it yourself and have a good look. The link will be in the description. Last thing I do then is build a curb. Um, it took me a little while to find something that I could use here. I wanted something that would move nicely around the, the corner there. The problem is a lot of the sort of uh, balustrade pieces and things like that, they're all on four meters. Uh, so it gets difficult to do around corners. Luckily this piece here, the end of it looks the same as the the long way, so it's just a case of, I mean the, the building counts quite high there, but I think it's worth it, I think it does look good. And then finally we move over some of our uh, lampposts to finish it off, and there we go. So we started off with our fountains on the way in. This area is still not complete, it's going to be a lot busier. Uh, we'll also have a few entertainers wandering around here as well, I think. Uh, but for now, it's a start, and obviously we will fill the gap there between the Playhouse Theatre and the Five Guys building as well, but we'll probably just do that with a couple of uh, smaller facade buildings. But that will be filled in, this is going to be all buildings all the way down uh, to the end of the street. You can see there at the top we'll have the entrance of the castle, I think. Uh, and there you go, a nice couple of uh, shots of the building there you can see. And I actually think it turned out really nicely. If anything, it makes the Playhouse Theatre look a little plain, because obviously, uh, you know, it's been a few weeks now, and my, my, my building technique has got a little bit better, I think, as I've played, so it might be a case of going to that Playhouse Theatre and neating it up a little bit at some point. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like, it really does help out the channel. And if you don't already, please subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.